All right, YouTube, an NSA tr contractor working with the, uh, I think it's the Boozman Brothers or something, it's a really funny company name, uh, has gotten in trouble. Those same ones Snowden was working for uh, got in trouble for stealing uh, classified information, sort of the results of surveillance programs used to monitor Russia or whatever. Uh, so now they're thinking maybe this was somebody who was planning to be a whistleblower. Uh, they would say traitor, of course, I would say whistleblower. What the NSA does on a day-to-day -day basis is unlawful. It's illegal. It's unconstitutional. It violates the Fourth Amendment. As such, I don't care if somebody working there uh, ends up mishandling intel, because they shouldn't have that intel, honestly, in the first place. They're not stopping terrorism. Uh, they're dicking around and wasting money. It's just an ineffective alphabet soup agency. Doesn't matter what, who's in government. It's going to remain ineffective. Uh, for instance, Trump gets in. He's a Republican, populist, and so forth. It's not going to make the NSA better. The NSA is already deeply entrenched as a, a crappy institution that doesn't do any good. They had agents at the NSA conducting surveillance on their loved ones, like their girlfriends or their crushes or whatever, labeling it Love Int, and you didn't hear much about this because the mainstream media only briefly reported on it because they realized, I think, how damaging it was. I wouldn't be surprised if the government told them, shh, just don't talk about it too much. Talk about some other part of the leak. Not that part, because people will realize how bad this really is. Um, they didn't want to talk about it. You've got NSA agents doing that, apparently, you know, thousands of times, blatantly unlawful. It's, it's really, it's criminal stalking when you think about it. Uh, then you have this contractor. It's not even someone working directly under the agency. It's a contractor working with the agency. Why do they have access to this material in the first place? Well, I, I, it boggles the mind now. In my mind, Congress should not be able to perpetually set up a bureau and empower it to craft what essentially amounts to its own legislation. Because that's what agencies have begun to do over time. I think that that itself is unconstitutional, regardless of the agency. Their allocation of funds and capabilities should either be temporary and automatically have sundown uh, status so that it goes the way of the dinosaur when it becomes vestigial, old, and no longer needed. Or they should be constrained. Congress has to give them any additional power directly. They shouldn't be able to make their own framework. They shouldn't have such a loose framework that they can just make whatever rules up that they want. For instance, the DEA. The DEA is not Congress. The DEA has simply been empowered by Congress to make laws regarding drugs. Well, that's why they have the ability to make a drug scheduling system that would never hold up to judicial scrutiny, honestly, uh, that would never hold up to even the most uh, the mediocre argument within a court, uh, and to unilaterally decide to ban anything under the sun that they determine to be a drug. They could label sugar a drug, and technically they could ban it under the way they operate. I see that as unconstitutional as well. Most people just focus on the aspect of domestic surveillance itself, the act, not the principle behind the act. Uh, but I would say this uh, individual, apparently his name is Harold Martin III, or, or some you know posh sounding name, <laughs> I can imagine, I'm just picturing him in my mind, and I picture the 400 pound man that Trump spoke of, honestly, uh, wearing a fedora, guzzling the Mountain Dew, writing code for the government as a contractor or something. I find it very, very strange that an agency that so far has not provably stopped a single terrorist attack, despite existing for that reason, that costs tens of billions of dollars, is also endangering our privacy collectively by allowing contractors, civilian groups that have no mandate from the government at all, to access that same classified information, those same uh, very secretive surveillance tools. And I'm not surprised that in such a situation, yeah, you're going to get leakers. Now, government could solve this problem. It could do away with the worst aspects of domestic surveillance, pledge it to the judicial system as it should be, to get honest-to-goodness warrants for very specific intel, which after a time, if there's no criminal case, should be destroyed. That would really protect these things. And it shouldn't all be digital. Some of it should just be on paper makes it a lot easier. At least some of the secondary findings that they would deal with based on the intel that they've collected it should be automatically wiped from all these servers 
over time as it falls into disuse. Um, that should have a sundown as well, honestly, the data that they've collected. Instead, they collect everything, they keep it forever, and they have private companies working with them that don't necessarily represent the best interests of the people of the United States. Case in point, this case, or even Edward Snowden, the fact that he was able to access his material. Now, I say, and I said this uh, before, Edward Snowden's not a hero, but he is a patriot. I don't have a problem with what he did. I think his motives were good. I think he performed a service for the American people. I think he should be granted condi uh, unconditional clemency. I know I would. If I was the President of the United States, it would be one of the first things I'd do. Pardon for Edward Snowden. Pardon, by the way, for Chelsea Manning. Pardon for any whistleblower who's been headhunted after by the Obama regime. I'd pardon them all, because ultimately, many of them have served a great service to the people of the United States in defense of our Constitution. When the government is at odds with the Constitution, the government should not be favored. Nor any argument they make should be listened to. The people shouldn't even be putting up with this. They should be, like, protesting outside all of the NSA sites. But they're too spineless, I guess, to do it, unfortunately. Maybe in time. Maybe eventually they'll grow some fucking balls. <clears throat> Maybe uh, the libertarian movement will finally fix it. You know, when they get a candidate who actually is <laughs> uh, capable of some level of brain development that he hasn't destroyed with marijuana, apparently. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I say that as a half joke. He, he appears to be consistently high whenever he's giving interviews. Maybe no chronic damage, but he's not making sense when he's speaking. Maybe he's on something stronger. Maybe... Maybe uh, in his case it was a gateway drug, or maybe he uses weed because he's secretly a meth addict and to deal with the, like, the withdrawal symptoms or something. I don't know what's going on with Johnson. Libertarian Party needs somebody that's a little bit more intelligent, capable of actually, you know, if, if Johnson had gotten up on stage during the debates the way he's acting, it wouldn't have mattered. He would have killed the libertarian movement just by being there. He'd be such an embarrassment. So I'm almost glad he didn't make it into the debates, honestly. Sad as that may be, because I happen to be a libertarian, sad as that may be, I'm glad that Johnson wasn't at the, the debate and won't be. Um, as far as the NSA goes, though, they serve no, no purpose. The, each of these whistleblowers, like Snowden, has served the people of the United States at great risk to themselves. You know, Snowden basically pissed away a six-figure salary uh, where he could have retired at 35 quite easily uh, and, and is now basically in exile for what he did. The NSA, meanwhile, has served no purpose. And then we, we find out shit like this. Oh, yeah, these contractors have full access to a bunch of classified stuff that technically they shouldn't have access to. It's civilian groups, why are they being given security clearance? And this is the same firm that Snowden was from. I would think at the very least that one firm, regardless of what I happen to think about Edward Snowden, because I happen to think he did a good thing. Regardless of that, why would the, the contractor involved still have security clearance? It's all very, very strange to me. It just goes to show, this is why the NSA has leaks, this is why they're not catching terrorists, because they're all inept. The agents are inept in the NSA. The contractors are probably more skilled than most of the agents are. The head of the NSA is a completely corrupt moron. The, the former head of the NSA has called out the current head of the NSA. Oh, the program you're using now, it's like going through a haystack to find a single needle. It doesn't work. It's inefficient. It costs too much. You're not going to catch anybody. We got the former head of the NSA. I think he knows what he's talking about when he's criticizing such a program. Nobody even wants to listen to him. Nobody in D.C. is. Some, some people in the civilian population understand that, but D.C.'s not listening. Neither the Republicans or Democrats. None of them have the balls to tackle this problem. I, I find it strange that a private contractor working with them would have repeated access after supplying one of the most infamous whistleblowers of the modern age. Regardless, again, of what you think of Snowden. I support him, but it is kind of odd that the same contracting firm as an individual who either is, is doing espionage, and they said that there's no evidence that that's the case, or was going to be a whistleblower, or maybe was just like one of those weird nerds who just wants to do it because they can, you know, hack the system just for the lulls or something. Either way, though, uh, you know, rather damaging to the NSA's credibility when this keeps happening, honestly. That's about all. Peace out.